everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. Today I'm here to talk to you about all the book series that I'm in the middle of as well as like uh, general thoughts about series I suppose. This is a video that I've seen a few people doing in recent months and I just really enjoyed it. In general I wouldn't call myself a huge series reader like apart from like a few series like that I talk about all the time like the upper mature novels and that and um, that I do enjoy a lot. Um, but I suppose if you count them up and especially like look back over the last few years um, I have read a good few series so I was interested to see kind of how many I hadn't finished yet and also coming around to the end of the year I suppose it's nice to maybe maybe next year I'd like to take some of these series complete them off the list so uh, yeah I said it'd be fun to count them up here today and uh, see how many. So there's two types of series I suppose I didn't include here and um, so the first would be like YA series I you know maybe started like 10 years ago and I will never finish or probably will never finish and also the same is uh, like crime series so um, I might return to them I might not but like again I wouldn't really view them very hugely as series and um, I'm not really setting out to finish them so I've ignored those as well and also like uh, non-fiction series like I have some very short introductions I'm not planning to read the whole of that series. Um, So also Out of Scope is a series that I have abandoned and don't intend to finish Um, like the most one I can think of for this is like the Kid series I just wasn't enjoying it and uh, also a series that I'm waiting on books to come out for like this month I've kind of been obsessed with reading the Nevermore series and like there's more books to come out of that um, and I've completed the ones that, uh, that are released so I'm not counting that as incomplete. All of these that I am counting are fiction and like are ones that I could see myself finishing and I'm still interested in finishing. Also just to say that these are in like no particular order in terms of uh, when I read them or like what's my favourite or like how complete I am with any of them I just it's just I looked at my shelves and literally the order that I seen them in but anyways with that uh, on to the series so the first series is a classic series and they're here behind me here so the Palliser novels by Anthony Trollope um, I've read the first three about like three or four years ago and I was enjoying them but I suppose I just got distracted by other priorities and other classics and I've heard since it's better to read the Barchester Chronicles first so I'm planning to read those next year and then return to the Palliser novels after that I'll probably start at the start again. So the second series that I'm in the middle of and it's a ridiculous series to be in the middle of actually and that's the Anne of Green Gables series because I love this series and I so there are eight novels in the series and I've read five and the reason it's a ridiculous series to be in the middle of is because I probably read the first three five times potentially because I love them and uh, I the fourth one is you know known as a weak point in the series and the fifth one I don't know what distracted me at the time that I didn't get through all the way through Anne's House of Dreams but um I just never got to the older, I never got to the later ones, which is a pity because I've heard some of the later ones, especially Rilla Vil Ingleside, are really good. Um, so yeah, like, I don't think I'll ever continue the series from the middle, but the next time I reread the Anne series, and they're like complete comfort reads for me, so I imagine I would read them at some stage, I will endeavour to get the whole way through the series, finally. So the third series that I'm in the middle of kind of unexpectedly as well I suppose is, is actually the Sharp series. Well I'm not in the middle of it. I've just read 21 out of 22 novels in it and this is actually the most recent novel that was released last Christmas and I have read this one. The one that I haven't read is Sharp's Devil and that's because it's set after the Napoleonic Wars and I just never got round to it and I don't own it. I just never really felt like reading about Sharp in his later life. I'm sure that will change and I'm kind of rereading these books very very slowly in publication order instead of in chronological order. Um, there's also like one or two short stories uh, like Sharp's Christmas I haven't read in the Sharp series and it's a series I really do love and as I said I'm kind of half rereading it so um, yeah I think there's another one out next year as well so I love Sharp. So the fourth series I've read some books from but not them all is this uh, series I've never heard on booktube actually um, an Irish country doctor series by Patrick Taylor who I think is Canadian um, but this is a real like cosy series like I suppose it's like a cosy mystery it's been so of mysteries there were like doctors I don't know if it's really a clear time period but you definitely get the sense it's like maybe the 1950s and it's about uh, this doctor called Fingal Flaherty O'Reilly who's a GP in Antrim or like somewhere up north in a village called Bally Buckaloo uh, he's a very funny character all of his patients are very funny and it's just very light-hearted like it's set in Ulster but like it's this kind of idyllic village where there's like no 
religious distinctions and no trouble of any kind and I think at the end of every book there's like uh, some recipes from his housekeeper and um, also like a glossary all well, the Irish uh, slang that's come up throughout the book like queer pronunciation of the word queer in parts of Ireland yeah that's true we'd always say queer they're just really cozy reads and I love the covers as well and kind of the feel of the paper so um yeah, they're just all around comforting reads. I've read seven out of 16 of them, finishing in an Irish country wedding. So that's definitely a series I could see myself returning to as well. As I said, these are like set in the 1950s, but I think there's a one where it shows, it's called An Irish Country Doctor in Love of War, I think, which is kind of set in the 1940s. So um, yeah, they're just really good. I'd recommend them if you like those kind of reads. So the fifth series I'm going to discuss is I've almost finished it, and that's the Quirk series by Benjamin Black, um, which is the pen name of John Banville when he writes crime. Um, each of the books is kind of, you know, a self-contained crime mystery, but the story really revolves around Quirk, uh, who's the who's a pathologist. He is very troubled past, I suppose, and uh, continues to haunt him. And uh, he's just a really memorable character. So I've read six out of each of these, and uh, I suppose I was reading as them as they were coming out, and then I dropped off the bandwagon somewhere so um, yeah I'd love to get back to these. I actually used to love reading these when I was in college during the summer and missing Dublin because they're so like Dublin based and uh, Quirk always goes for tea in like the Shelburne and things and I was like oh someday I will get to go for tea in the Shelburne but um, yeah there's another series um, that John Badmill is writing about a detective which I think would be really interesting as well. I've actually got the first one on my shelf. I'd like to finish this one first. So I'd say that book would be more of like a high priority read for me in terms of finishing series. So the sixth series that I have only just started is the Lord Peter Whimsey series. I own the first three, but I've only read the first one. And I think there's like, is there like 11 books by the, by Dorothy Sayers? Um, and I really like this one and I've heard that they only get better so um, yeah I, I think most people are familiar with these it's kind of about this uh, gentleman called Lord Peter Whimsey who kind of is an amateur sleuth so uh, yeah he, he is really into like classical music and he's a bit of a snob um, but yeah this one was just really enjoyable and fun. So the seventh series that I'm going to talk about again I've only just started and this is uh, Dissolution by CJ Sansom which is the first book of the Matthew Shardlake series which is again <laughs> a lot of these are about solving crime. So this is about Matthew Shardlake who is a lawyer in Henry VIII's England and he in this book anyways he ended up getting sent to a monastery um, where there had been a murder committed and I thought it was so brilliant and I've heard as well that they only get better. Um, I assume he doesn't all the time go to monasteries but he obviously must get involved in some kind of uh, legal cases. It, I was really impressed with CJ Sansom's writing. I don't know if the next book in the series is going to be the next CJ Sansom I read because I have, I know that I'm going to get a, a different CJ Sansom for Christmas um, that isn't in the series so I might read that one first but we'll see. So the eighth series is uh, the Paul Dark series. I loved the television series. That's what I came to Paul Dark first through and I really enjoyed the books as well when I read them and I think I only read the first three. Um, but yeah, again, ones I must finish. This is the second book in the series, Mel, I don't know where the first one is. I still haven't found it since February. They're set in like the late 18th, early 19th century down in Cornwall in England. And they kind of follow this man called Ross Paul Dark, uh, who is involved in like mines down there. Basically, he's uh, his fortunes and his romantic interests. They're great. They're a great like family saga. I suppose they'd be classed as. Um, but yeah, I love them. And this, definitely the television series is worth checking out, even if you don't want to commit to the books. So the ninth one is definitely more of a blast from the past. And that's the Red Wall series by Brian Jacquez. I loved these books when I was younger, but I can't remember anything about them really. And I read them very like randomly because I was getting them from the mobile library. And I think I think maybe I got to read Redwall and maybe two others. Um, but so I but they're so well known and I did enjoy them so much. And again, the television series, uh, the cartoon was uh, something I loved to watch. Um, I'd love to go back to them. So it's set back in medieval times, and but it's not in a world of humans. It's a world of like these anthropomorphized animals. Um, so the good guys, as far as I can remember, are like um these mice who are like monks in a monastery, and they're all the time trying to keep out these rats, which are the bad guys. I can't remember much else really. So the, but the main guy I remember, uh, the little fella in the front there, is called Matthias, and uh, I know he's very inspired by like this mouse from the past called. 
called Martin the Warrior and I think Martin sometimes talks to him and um yeah I actually just talking about these makes me excited to pick them up again and definitely since reading the Nevermore series uh, this month I'm like oh my god I must read more children's books because they're amazing and um, so yeah another one I'm sure I'll get to I picked up Moss Flower not too uh, not too long ago actually so uh, yeah I might start collecting them so next is the trilogy and I've actually read two of the three books of this trilogy this year so I need to take off the last one and that's the new policeman trilogy by Kate Thompson this is one of those series that I probably am just going to try and finish just for like completion's sake I've heard I like the New Policeman, the first book, is absolutely excellent. I'd recommend it to anyone. It's so, so good. It's set in a village called Kinvara, like roughly the present day. It's about this boy called JJ and the thing that his mother asks for for her birthday is more time because she always seems to be running out of time, as does everybody in the village. And he takes that very literally and actually tries to go out and find more time. So uh, yeah, it's just a great, great story. Great links at like Irish mythology. Then I read the second book, which is about JJ's kids, and you know, it was grand, but it wasn't anywhere near as good. And I've heard the third one is complete disaster. So uh at the moment I'm saying I want to finish it, but who knows, maybe I just won't bother. Um but yeah, the uh, new policeman is a classic and it can completely stand alone, even if you don't want to read the rest of the series, and I'd really, really recommend it. So the eleventh series, oh goodness, this list is getting a little bit long. Um, is this the Railway Detective series? So I like found a load of these books cheap on like in a newsagent once that I picked them all up. They're like these mysteries that are like set on trains and I love trains. So uh I picked them up straight away. It's like set in the Victorian period, as you can probably tell from the picture. Um, and I was, I did like them, but I don't know. I didn't really love Detective Inspector Colback um, or his love interest. So um, that kind of put me off. But it might be worth going back to them again and seeing if I've changed my mind. Um, because, you know, I do love trains and murder mysteries on trains. What much more better could you get? So uh, I wonder how many of these are murder mysteries. Shocking. So a change in pace, and I don't know how many of these I've read because this is going back into the vaults a little bit. And um, I used to be a big fan of Doctor Who. I probably still am. I haven't liked the latest series quite as much, and I think I've missed a one or two series. But um, definitely like the Matt Smith era and maybe even Peter Capaldi I was very into Doctor Who at that stage and I did go back and watch some of the classic Doctor Who as well uh the big finish audio dramas I suppose really got me into the eighth Doctor and um I saw that there was this big long series of books called eight Doctor Adventures to be fair they're kind of like variable quality as would be any series that's written by loads of authors but I did really like that they had like overarching plots over a whole box and um just the amount of mythology you got into i suppose um i don't know which one this is i picked it up kind of at random off my shelves but um like i don't know if these would pro be priority reads for me to go back and read i don't know how many books there are in the series i think there's like 60 or something ridiculous like that but they were nice quick reads and i did enjoy them so i might read even the ones i have on my shelves but oh it's so hard to go back and say that i read them when i have so many books on my shelves but i'm not willing to let go of them yet um so yeah and they're really small little books they don't take up that much room yeah that's eight doctor adventures i'd love to know if anybody else read these um either the eighth doctor adventures or even like the ones about the other doctors there are some really good ones in there like my favorite one is probably wolfsbane which i think is a fourth doctor adventure with sarah and harry and i think that harry sullivan is in is going to be gold so any other doctor who fans out there i'd love to hear from you so this one is this even a series i don't know there's only it's only a duology really but um the Kate Agatha Life After Life and I think isn't the second one is it called like Big Sky or something like that I can't remember but it's about the main character in this book's brother I loved Life After Life I actually listened to it on audiobook I love to read it in physical format because there's a lot in it and um yeah it's just it blew my mind when I listened to it on audio so um yeah I do, I, I I think when I read this again I would like to read the companion novel about her brother as well um so yeah, I will. I do intend to finish this series someday. So another duology next, and this one is the Trinity Redemption duology by Leon Uris, who's an American author. 
I absolutely loved Trinity. Just, I didn't even mean to put these together, but I listened to Trinity on audio again. Again, it's such a fantastic novel. Um, it's set during the Irish War of Independence, um, mostly kind of in uh, up north, I think in like Antrim. Um, so there's like everything in it. It's like a family saga, romance. There's stuff about like the working classes. There's such a memorable scene. I remember clearly listening to it. Such a memorable scene set in like shirt factories. Um, but yeah, the end of the book really like Trinity nearly felt Trinity did feel like it could stand alone as a book. But I've heard from a commenter actually that the second book, Redemption, which I haven't read yet, is wonderful as well, and you know continues the story. Um, I spoke in error. Um, like Trinity is really set um during the War of Independence. It's kind of just the build up to it. Um. And I suppose the tensions that were there and then this book brings right up to the Easter Rising, I think, in 1916 and kind of covers the First World War. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I do want to read this someday. It's very long. So many books in the world and uh, so little time. But, uh, yeah, I, I would like to read this one someday. So the 15th book I'm going to talk about is uh, this one, uh, The Year of the French by Thomas Flanagan. Uh, this is the first book in a trilogy. And again, it's uh, set in Ireland. This tells the story of the 1798 United Irish Women Rebellion. But what's interesting about this one, I suppose, for me, is it's about the part in Mayo and when, like, General Humbert and French troops uh, landed in Mayo to support an Irish uprising and you know presumably uh, makes the Napoleonic Wars easier for the, to themselves but uh, that year 1798 is uh, known around Connacht as the Year of the French which is where the title of this book comes from. This book I felt it was very like self-contained and it worked perfectly well that way but I know it's part of a trilogy and I did enjoy it so maybe someday again I'd uh, go back and uh, read the rest of the trilogy. So I've unintentionally grouped all these together I suppose as well. Another uh, trilogy set in Ireland is that uh, this is the first book of the trilogy called Seek the Fair Land by Walter Mackin this book was set um kind of back in the 1640s i think and it follows this man called dominic and he's kind of fleeing um oliver cromwell's troops across ireland again one i really really enjoyed and uh, i think the other two books in the trilogy the silent people and the scorching wind take place like later in history so um kind of a cross-generational family saga so uh yeah if funny i could find such beautiful editions of the other two books because i really like this one that is number 16 I think. So the next one is a bit of a change in pace and that's the Temeraire series by Naomi Novik. Um, this is excellent. I've read the first three books of this series and I own them all and I oh I loved them when I was reading them. I just haven't got back to them yet. Um, so this is set in the Napoleonic Wars again but it's like in an alternative universe kind of where there's another segment of the British military that is like the Dragon Corps and this starts off on a ship with a captain called Will Lawrence who's transporting a dragon egg on board and suddenly the dragon egg decides it wants to hatch when they're, uh, when they're after a battle I think so um, they're just a great alternative history of the Napoleonic Wars and please just give me all the alternative histories I love them so uh, yeah I must get back to the series but again I have that that wish to start it again there's just so many books to read I can't keep rereading series so number 18 is a very long-running series and that's the Belito series by Alexander Kent um I think that's a pen name I can't think of his real name now I've read only one out of 29 of these books and it wasn't even the first book and uh, this book is like number 13 or something and I'm in sight but I really loved it. I thought it was really well written. The one thing I did not like about this book, as I've said before, is the inside. I, 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 I still can't believe this, which is why I can't stop talking about it. On the very first page, you, know, you turn over the cover and it's like the cover page in front of you, there is like a chronology of like an internal timeline of the entire series and all the events that happen to the main character, including absolutely massive spoilers. But like, what to think for the inside page of a book but um i'm still not over it as you can see but um yeah what i loved about these is they were kind of set in the late 18th century instead of like the early 19th so um yeah i just liked those ones and yeah i must pick up more of them number 19 at uh, like the doctor who books is another kind of uh television or film spin-off and that is a uh, star wars the new jedi order whenever the new trilogy came out i became obsessed with star wars briefly these of course don't really match up with the newer films but they're uh, about like say luke and han and leia's children and they're 
like that's the new Jedi Order is like kind of like the next generation and this series in particular follows um, them all as they're like battling this major foe called the Yuuzhan Vong sorry I couldn't remember them the Yuuzhan Vong and like the stakes are really high and really serious things do happen in these books and um, yeah they were just really good Um, I got I actually got a long way into the series I got to no, book 9 out of 19 um, star by star if anybody has read that book you know what happens in star by star but um, yeah like again they wouldn't really be priority reads to go back to but um I did really enjoy them when I was reading them and never say never. And to finish is one that I really, really would like to get back to. And that is the Sherlock Holmes series. I've only read like recently. I think I've read like some more when I was younger, but the ones that I read recently were The Hand of the Baskervilles and the first two short stories in The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which I read for Victober, and which I enjoyed so, so much. So I definitely would like to read all of Sherlock Holmes. And enough said, everybody knows who Sherlock Holmes are. And like... Yeah, my cat is called Sherlock, so I would like to read them all. And uh, yeah, like they're just brilliant, brilliant stories. So that's it for the 20 series that I'm in the middle of. At least it's a nice round number. I think it is a little bit higher than I expected just because some of these series, I suppose I haven't read for a while. And I, I'm not expecting that I'll get all of them finished next year or anything. But uh, it's nice to kind of have an idea of where I am with them and uh, maybe be a little bit more conscious before starting more series, though I can't promise anything. There are some books uh, in ongoing series that I'm really looking forward to coming out um, like most notably the Book of Dust series by Philip Pullman which is great linked to his like his Dark Material series which I've really loved and also um, the Nevermore series because I've just finished the third book this month and I'm dying to see what happens next on that and I think there's a new shark coming out next year as well which is very exciting and of course there's some series that are kind of dropped midway and probably will never be finished the one I'd like to, the one that's most on my mind there is Under Enemy Colours um, I loved that series it's so good and it, it, I, but I don't think it's going to be picked up again so uh, I suppose never say never again so yeah I really enjoyed making this video let me know if you like big like reading book series and uh yeah thanks for listening thanks for watching and i'll see you next thursday for my next video